Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. As promised, I wanted to have a flip through these two new books. We've all been working with lots of uh, concepts and ideas out of Jennifer's uh, foolproof flower embroidery. Rachel put us on to this, um, oh, I think it was late last year, and I got mine and I've done a review on it, but I won't focus on that now because if you did want to see it, I'll put it in a link below because down the rabbit hole we go is these two books. I couldn't believe it when I found them. I'm not sure what order everything came out in. So let's see if we can work that out. But I know um, I've also discovered that um, Jennifer is a Queensland girl currently residing on the Sunshine Coast and is doing classes here and about and everywhere. So I'm in the process of hunting her down to do some classes, probably later in the year. I've got enough on my plate now. This one is 2021 Foolproof Crazy Quilts. Look at that. There was a lady posted an image of this that she was working on. She was doing her own version and it was stunning. I think it was on, it was either on a slow stitch Facebook group, just slow stitch, or I have a feeling it was um, on Susanna's, not Susanna, Sonia's site. But anyway, it popped up and I'm like, whoa, what is that? And then I just happened to have this come up, this book come up on my, um, you know, when 2013 is that one. All right. You know, when uh, 2016. All right, so 2013, 2016, 2021. If there are other books, I'm yet to find them. If it's just the three, yay, I've found them. So let's have a little look. Let's go back to this one is the second one. Let's go to this one. Yeah, so this popped up and um, on my feed as a potential, you might be interested in this. You know, when Facebook and the world is listening to what we're up to. I'm just going to zoom in and we'll just look at that one image. Look at that. Look at that. See this? Oh, gee, this girl's clever. She's like created a, a base, a foundation to it. Up comes a plant. Then just some random framing of the piece. Beautiful. Okay. Imagine it now as a whole wall hanging. Oh, my goodness. I'll zoom back up because we'll be here all day. So just a quick flip through just to give you a bit of an idea of what's in the book. So that... Um, oh, look at that. Little little village scenes with people. So she was a South African girl. She grew up in South Africa. So a lot of her cultures, I know there was an interview I found, we'll link that as well with um, a podcast where you listen to Jennifer talk and they just put rolling photos of um, her work up and get interviewed by two people. I can't remember the details. I'm sort of my brain's a bit scattered at the moment, but um, the links will be below of that interview. Fibre Art or Fibre Talk, I think it is. And also the review of the flower book, if you're wondering what the hang I'm talking about. So here's some influences. Zulu beadwork heavily influences Jennifer's work. She mentioned that in that interview. Indian embroidery. Oh. And then Jennifer. Isn't it amazing that we can take, you know, concepts and ideas and inspiration from very old cultures and it pops up now, today in our work. Stunning. Let me just bring that up to the camera, that beading. Look at that. Oh, wow. And look at the Indian embroidery. Wow. And then Jennifer. Talented girl, talented girl. 
Okay, so she goes through the stages of doing... This is great because Susanna from Vintage Blend Studios is giving us a prompt a month where we study an old technique of hand sewing or sewing. So English paper piecing and, I believe, crazy patchwork quilting yeah is in it so and i was wondering how i go about doing all of this getting that foundation so awesome that was the main reason i bought the book too not only was it a a jennifer oh look at that mm -hmm. isn't that just like a bowl of lollies just lollies lots of lollies her colors are so vibrant Look at the spider coming out of the flowers. Oh my goodness me. Look at that. The spider's creeping out. So one of the patches could be a spider. I have to remember that for the Susanna project. That'd be a bit of fun. I better write that down. I'm never going to remember that. And see how you get inspiration to work a little animal into your piece. Like, it doesn't have to be all floral. It could be the bees, the spiders, the butterflies worked into... Oh, look at the layers. Like, she's put a metal butterfly. I think I have that butterfly. Uh, I can't half tell she's an Aussie girl. We're all shopping in the same places. Look at that. Oh, bring it up to the camera. See the tiny little ribbon leaves? Whoa. Look at the little hearts with the sprays coming. Oh, goodness me. So she, in this book, okay, goes through. There's a bee. Look at the bee. Maybe I take something like this on my cruise. I was thinking Boro, but I could, no, I'm going to need to pack too much with this because you'd want to go looking for all the bits and pieces to do it. And I'll end up being stuck on a big cruise boat and pining over my craft room. And that stress, that, that upsets me. <laughs> so I probably shouldn't bother with this idea. Look at all the ribbons. She flips between beads, ribbons, threads. I'd have to take my craft room. Unless I pack a suitcase just with beads, ribbons and threads. My husband will shoot me. He'd be like, you're a lunatic. Look at that winding flower at the top. Oh, my goodness. Hmm. Oh. Jennifer, it now makes sense how this came to be because this sort of slows us down and we study how to build a new form out of a floral. This is applying it to a masterpiece. Like, look at those little stitches there. She's used a velvet blue ribbon. Let me bring it up. A velvet blue ribbon and then bullion stitches and beads to couch it all down oh my goodness you're gonna be sick of me saying that's the one on the front cover you're gonna be sick of me saying oh my goodness oh look at that oh bloom and hang that's is that lace a ribbon yep ribbon my ribbon i own is not that fine i don't think i could pull that off so what size ribbon is she using? Four mil. Okay. I have very little four mil ribbon. So my guess is my ribbon's probably a bit thick to get that fine detail. So how big is a hexagon? I wonder. Oh, I'll be here all day. Just stay focused, Corinne. Yeah. I'll look at the beads in a row. See, I've never thought to do that. See all the beads in a row there? Look at that. That's um, fuchsias. See, they have those petals and then little layer of petal and then little stamens. Let me bring it up to the camera. Fuchsias. How beautiful. Mm. It's the colours that she's doing. Look at that flower with the tiny little bullion knots. No, they're just straight stitches. They're not a bullion knot. So... See how she curls back that embroidered ribbon? I've only done a little bit of embroidery with ribbon. It's never been 
on my radar frequently enough to be used regularly. So it's definitely something on my wish list. There's a butterfly made out of four stitches of the ribbon. Yeah, look at it, little green butterfly here. So it's sort of not, I'm not fluid in it. So this would be really fun. Oh, look at that. This would be really fun to explore lots of stitches, the little dragonfly. Now, Sonia, um, now her channel, she's going through these types of projects, stitching different things onto crazy patchwork. So if you wanted to get on to someone who's actually doing this type of work, different style again, like everyone's got their own style, you could go to Sonia's channel. So I'm going to link Sonia and her channel. I'll link the interview with Jennifer and I'll link down below the review I did of this book, just in case you haven't, um, you know, seen that book. So let's get hopping here. I'm going to be here all day. Okay, so now we go into the stitches, which is always handy. A lot of them we know, but, you know, sometimes a different diagram just opens up you know, herringbone stitch, you know, sometimes it's just a different way of them drawing it, just makes it click in your mind. I do tend to just put into YouTube herringbone stitch and then watch a tutorial on it. I'm a bit of a visual learner. I'd probably click more with someone doing it and then it's in my memory than a book. But, you know, if you're somewhere where you can't get internet access and it's just all what's with you the books like this are really good at least oh look at that creating a loop around a structure to do a flower my goodness look at that ribbon work oh, oh boy beading Oh, how you run your lines, your stitches through your beads. Yep. Clever, clever chook this girl is. Can't wait to meet her one day. There's the fuchsia. Aren't you sweet? Half the battle is knowing the layers and what stitch you do first to get where you need to get. Look, a butterfly made out of Lazy Daisy stitch. Like, of course, like that's not hard, but to see it done just reminds you. Oh, of course, I'm in the insect section, webs and insects. So that is just very handy. And they're a good size for our pieces. Maybe I've got to do a few insects on some of the pieces. I know which piece needs that. This little wave of colour, that there could do with some insects. That might be worth playing with. Some spiders and some butterflies. And then adding embellishments, putting a bow in the centre of a button. Embellishing a button with some stitches. Knotting ribbons, stitching it down. Using charms. Couching fabrics to make them look lumpy and bumpy like that's technology there isn't it not technology technical wording and then she goes through how to finish a little hexagon off and edge it oh my goodness me like oh look at that look at that oh my goodness oh that's taking my breath away. Hmm. Wow. It really is free form, isn't it? And then applying it to things. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh, imagine little purses with it, you know? That nice little purse when you're going to a wedding or something. Just something special. Trinket boxes and there's the patterns. So, hey, ah, oh, very good. This will be handy for my Susanna prompt when I get into. There's young Jennifer. Hello, Jennifer. Of 
Congratulations, Jennifer. My goodness, look at that. That's a bigger photo of that. That just stopped me in my tracks. That's so me, those colors. Oh, I love it when apple, apple green pops in with pink. It just is beautiful. All right, enough of that. Let's get into this one. 10 projects, full size patterns. Oh, black as the background with the colors. Christine, I know you're watching. Christine has a channel where she's doing the down the garden path and her premise is her garden in the moonlight. So everything in the background is the blacks and then the moonlight is picking up on the colors of the embroidery. If you don't own this book already, Christine, I know what you're going to do. You're going to stop this video about now and she'll be off and she'll be getting this book. But she probably owns the book already. Beautiful. Oh, my goodness. And black's not a colour that comes into my mind frequently for embroidery. But when Christine did it, I better link Christine's channel. All right. Let's back to the spider. I need a piece of paper. I will put in... Before I get ahead of myself, first thing was the interview with Jennifer. It's just verbals. You can't see anything as they talk to her phone link and interview. I'll then put Sonia's site where Sonia is doing these types of projects. So I'm just going to pick a random one and that will show you Sonia's version. And Sonia's been doing this for years and years and years and years. What Sonia doesn't know ain't worth knowing. She's our national treasure in Australia. So Sonia's going to be linked. Um, Christine is working her down the garden path with a black background and um, bringing in the bright colors and things for her garden. So if that catches your eye, oh, she's a talented girl. Um, now, who else did I mention? I'll have to re-watch this video to make sure I, I get everyone that I'm yibby yabbing. Oh, myself reviewing the book of embroidery stitches, that, that one that we're all chasing over the last month or so. So there's a lot of new people joining my page. So that'll be a really good start for you. If you're new and you're like, oh my goodness, this is overwhelming, do yourself a favour and track down that foolproof embroidery book. Rachel put us onto it, I think it was late last year. So the girls opened us up to that one and spot on, ladies. Absolutely spot on. So this is more using these stitches in projects. Oh, look at that. Using a um, hair straightener to get the wrinkles out of your ribbons. I did see someone do that on a video a while ago. So that's good to getting a sharp edge with the iron. Getting your hexagon pieces down, or not your hexagon, your crazy pieces. I must try that. Oh, I've got that fabric. I've got that fabric. Oh, she's such an Aussie girl. Isn't it cool when you've got an artist from your own country and you recognise the materials that they're using? That is super cool. There you go, Christine. I bet she owns this book for sure. She would have found Jennifer. Oh, doesn't they just pop on those backgrounds? For an evening purse, brilliant sewing pouch so if we remember at the beginning of this video before i start oh look at the slippers 10 projects of ways of applying embroidery let's zoom in on those little slippers oh wouldn't they be a beautiful gift not much um therapeutic structure there for the old foot but boy wouldn't you look a bit swish look at those stitches Oh, up we come. What else have we got here? Oh, yeah, see, you often see these handles on bags at the op shops or the thrift stores. I know you can't buy them, but if there was a, a bag that had a gorgeous handle, grab the bag, cut it off, and then apply our embroidery to the handle. That'd be a 
a great little project. Mm. Those colours, the burnt greens, the reds, brown spider. Oh, she's used a little heart bead for the body of the spider and then a, oh goodness, and a pearl for the head. Look at that. Mm. A tea cosy. See, the things from our past are coming, look at the wisteria. The things from our past are coming back. Look at the wisteria there. Oh, hours of work. My goodness. Mm -hmm. Gee. So if you're looking to add a book to your collection, that... I've seen that on a embroidered tablecloth. So how clever. She's used that as the one of the panels. That's a pre-embroidered tablecloth and then enhanced it from there. She's put that up there, that up there, a couple of little buttons, that through there, some little bees, and then made it a made, made it, made a case for your glasses. Yeah, there it is. That's it there. Mm. Gee, some pretty fabrics using little, little, um, oh, what's the word? Not checks is a better word than the word check. I don't know. My head's spinning here looking at all these lollies. Oh, look at that. Stacking buttons and beads to create a clasp. I presume that's what she's doing. Oh, it's the lid to the box. You pick that up in your fingers. Oh, you forget all these things, don't you? You just so look at the sewing basket. That reminds me of Easter. The yellow, the pink, and the green. There's that spider again. We're gonna have to try a spider. Not that I'm a fan of spiders, but I'm okay. I'm the one that usually rescues my husband, who is absolutely in fear of spiders. Even a little spider will get him squealing like a girl. I tell you, when these big huntsmen come marching through the house, you should see him. You, you, it's, it's hilarious. I can't stop laughing personally. And then he gets angry that I'm laughing and I sort of let the spider do its thing for a minute or two before I rescue, I know, wicked. It doesn't make sense. He's a big man. Like, what's what's wrong with that? I don't get it. Oh, look at that. Oh, my head hurts. I'm getting a headache just looking at this. How am I gonna retain all these stitches? It's not the stitches, it's the combination of stitches. It's how you layer your stitches. Look at that, the bud and plume stitch. Oh my goodness, there he is. I have to stitch one for my husband. That's a bit naughty. See, once again, the combination, laying down your stem, then using a bead to create that joint that is often in plants. So there'll be a, a point of which that the leaves will come from. Like if you were to cut that plant in nature, that could be the point of which some uh, little roots would come out of it if you were um, doing some cutting, some propagating. The little bead, it, it makes sense to have that because it's in nature, isn't it? Look at that, a tufted bud. Are you serious? Oh, look at the bow, look at the bow. Let's zoom in at the bow. Look at that. Okay, let's have a good look at that. Now you got too much of me in there. We're getting too far away from the book. Time to 
finish this up. There's all the patterns at the back. Lovely, lovely. For all the projects, they look like they're in perforated so you can pull them out. Wow. Well, my head's spinning. I've got plenty of notes now of what I will attach in the bottom. All right, guys, you are watching this on Wednesday. So I just finished filming the video that you watched yesterday and I thought before I get sidetracked for my day, I have to have to put this in my iPad and you guys are watching this on Wednesday. So Thursday, I'll pick a project from our Journal of Stitchery down the garden path and um, I'll see you in that video. All right, guys, thank you very much for joining me and uh, have a lovely day stitching. And I bet some of you go shopping. Anyway, sorry about that. I'm enabling you again. <laughs> All right, bye.